gotta keep our fingers crossed, I hope. Well, um, nice to meet you guys. My name's Leah. I'm gonna be one of your uh, MCs tonight. Let me see if I can. I'm so excited because, well, of course, it hasn't rained yet, so. And this is just one of my favorite events to um, come back to from college at Market Fest. So there's just so much you can check out. There's a, over 150 vendors. We got a classic car show on 5th. Uh, oh my gosh, we have so much stuff, including uh, Manito Days that's going on. Um, but yeah, it's going on uh, through June 13th through the uh, July 25th, including July 4th, 4th of July, which is next week. So we will have our uh, 4th of July show after Market Fest, which will be really, really fun. I'll be at the Memorial Beach at 10 p.m. Our fireworks are just absolutely amazing. Um, tonight we have a lot of events going on, so buckle your seatbelts. Uh, as you know, we do have uh, both uh, music performances on our gazebo stage as well as our uh, Third Street stage. Uh, tonight on our Third Street stage, we have uh, the Castaways, which is a Minneapolis, uh, yeah, Minnesota-based rock and roll band that's known for their top ten hit. Uh, Liar Liar, which will be pretty fun. And they have an intermission performance given by the White Bear Lake Orchestra. So that'll be fr fun to check that out. Um, at 7 p.m. on 4th Street, we will be having a business runway, which features some of our uh, downtown White Bear businesses. And they'll just be uh, showcasing some of their uh, products, services on the red carpet. So make sure to check that out. Uh, we'll also have a walk down memory lane, which features activities and booths highlighting uh, programs and just stuff to check out, and uh, it's put on by the White Bear Lake Historical Society. And last but not least, we're bringing back a popular favorite, which is our uh, cakewalk. Um, so make sure to participate in that, and you get the chance to walk home, bike or drive, whatever, however you came here, with the cake baked by Grandma's Bakery, which will be really cool, so check that out. All right, so tonight we have our famous Lamont Cranston band on the gazebo stage. <laughs> Yeah, give it up. We'll be rocking. <laughs> so they are a blue space band known for their uh, hit hit song "Upper Mississippi Shakedown." So make sure to listen to that, and you'll have a lot of fun. Get up and dance, and an uh, intermission performance given by our White Bear Lake drum line. So that'll be really fun. So again, you guys have a good time, and uh, check out what Market Fest has to offer. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> I'm 
show you how nice a man can be. She coming back home to me.
Revolution and I will put it in your frame. When I'm dead and gone, remember me just the same. Yeah, why?
dog that bites. I'm not the cat that scratches, baby. And I'm not the dog that bites. But I'll be your box of matches, baby.
a wishy wash. Set my little soul on fire. When she turns, she my heart desire. And if she ever leaves me, oh, I will die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, You better think about settling down and stop chasing all these women around. Because they said, Lamar, you're starting to lose your hair. And you're putting on too many pounds right down there. And if you get a chance to get a woman, you better hang on to her and don't let her go. Cause you might not get a chance no more. So that's what I did. I got me a woman. I got me a woman. And she feeds me with a golden spoon. But she don't like no monkey business. She don't want me drinking. You know this is just lemonade, don't you? You know there's no liquor in here. You know this just, don't put this on Facebook. I got a woman, she feeds me with a golden spoon, but she don't allow no monkey business. She don't want me drinking when I go out to play. So what I do is on the way home, I stop in the Burger King. I get two double cheeseburgers with extra onions so she can't smell the liquor on my bread. But she can still tell. She can still tell. You know how? You know how she can tell? You know how she can tell? You know how she can tell? Because she said you were talking funny. I thought I was talking pretty good. I know some of you women there smiling at the man with you because this might be happening in your own home. This might be happening tonight in your own home. You might be coming home a little tipsy and he think he's doing good, but you can still tell. You can still tell. And that's what happened to me last weekend. And she threw all my stuff out in the yard. That's when I said life of this blues man is getting too doggone hard. But I hope one of these days.
not the only one with a cowboy hat. You know, this is a good place to do this song. I know some people here always request this song. I'm out of tune. You know, we got tuners nowadays. Back in the 60s, we didn't have tuners. And this was really hard on acid. The Grateful Dead would does this for a half an hour.
during the 60s, we didn't have tuner. I don't have one now. This makes it really easy if, if you're on acid. If you can see the thing. Now back in the 60s, we didn't have these things. That's why it took us a long time to tune up. Ah, not too bad, not too bad. Since we are filming tonight, got to make sure we're in tune. And I want you people to make a lot of noise, even if you don't like it. But pretend you do. I want to hear a lot of clapping after my solos, okay? My wife told me not to be a clown. I, you know, I don't want to be no clown no more. She said, I don't want to be a clown. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Rod liked that. <laughs> That was jazz. What note was that? Damn. <laughs> I'm just like somebody who just pulled off the street and gave me a guitar. long walk at the close of the day take your hand and steal your heart away I'll see you young for the rest of your days and the Lord bless you in so many ways I want to see peace for happy people Right now. 
Opportunities. They're providing scholarships like we've never been able to provide before. So we want to shout out to them and say thank you for all their work. We're also going to circulate some buckets during the performance. And if you feel so inclined, if you'd like to contribute towards the boosters, um, they're doing great stuff. They've got a commissioning project in the works. We're going to mention scholarships. They're helping students get other opportunities in music. And we're very proud of them. So if a bucket comes by, please feel free to throw in a dollar or two. But while we want to get going with the show, I'd like to introduce Mr. Eric Richardson and the White Bear Lake Drumline. All right, thank you. Thank you all for coming out tonight. If you came to see the Drumline or if you're here to see the music, thank you either way. It looks like the weather held off for everyone, so that's fantastic. Uh, so tonight we're going to give you a day in the life of the White Bear Lake Drumline. Uh, this group was started 13 years ago. And we have a few of the, you know, initial members in the group. There you go. Hi, Caitlin. Uh, and so Mr. Rockford was the reason this group started. He's the reason it keeps going. So we got to give a big thank you to him. Um, and so 13 years ago, I was a member right away. And I was asked to come back. I don't know why he did that, but he did. Uh, and so our season starts in April every year. Uh, the students get ready. They audition. And we do most of our performances during the summer. Uh, you may have seen us at the Wiper Lake Parade. We also did the Oakdale Parade, where we won Best Youth Group last Thursday. Yeah. Good job, you guys. So thank you. Um, and so the beginning of our season is all spent learning technique. And so if you've played a sport, if you've done an activity, if you learned an academic subject, you all know that foundational skills are incredibly important. Uh, and so the first skill we learn is basically how to hit our drum or our mallet instrument or our cymbal and it's just hitting it one time and we do that over and over again and we learn the basics of what we call a stroke just hitting the drum one time so our first exercise we're going to play it four times it's called eight on a hand and you hit your drum eight times with one hand and that's what it is we come up with very creative titles uh, for everything we do so drumline could you demonstrate for everyone if i tell you to get that set Right? So make sure you watch their feet. They're going to mark time, which means they're keeping the beat with their feet. And they're also going to be performing eight on a hand. And here we go. Here. So that exercise right there took us six hours to perfect. 
believe it or not. Uh, we typically have two hour rehearsals at the end of the school year. And I think drumline members, you can agree, I think six hours until we kind of got everything perfected because it's not just a simple matter of just throwing a stick at a drum or a mallet or just banging two cymbals together like you see the little monkeys do, right? There is precision to what we do. There are things that our hands have to do. You have to hold things the right way. You have to move your arms, your wrists, your fingers. You have to do that in a certain way um, in order to be able to play the instrument and let it sound the way that it's intended to. So if you look at every single one of them up there uh, for each section, they're playing in different ways. They're, they're hitting the drums in different spots. Um, and we'll take you on a tour through the drum line and I'll tell you more about each section later on as we go, but make sure you really pay attention um, and seeing how great all these kids are and what they do. Uh, so our second warm-up is called Legato. And any of you musicians out there, if you know what Legato means, um, it means smooth and connected. And so now we were playing with one hand, and now we need to play with both of our hands, okay? You can't do everything just one-handed. Um, and so we go back and forth, hand to hand, and we want to make sure that our left hand and our right hand, or if we have splits, like the cymbal section is split into two groups of three and three, if you're going back and forth, everything has to sound just the same as everything else. So we're going to play this exercise uh, three times, and this is legato. So make sure you watch and see how smooth everyone looks while they play. What? You guys all right so this is the last one we're going to play today for you it's called taps and accents and so now that we're playing with both of our hands uh, we can't just play at one dynamic all the time anymore so we have to play at different heights uh, we have our accent stroke which is roughly 12 inches of height we have our tap stroke which is about three inches of height in order to make music sound interesting we have to play at different heights and so this is the last one we do we also have a warm-up called singles which teaches us how to play in duple versus triple meter which is either two notes a beat or three notes a beat. We have double stroke, we have roll technique. So there, this isn't the only warm-ups we do. There's a lot of time that all these guys spend in terms to like own their craft and to get better about how they play all their instruments. So this is the last warm-up. It's called Taps and Accents. See if you can see the different heights that each of these guys are playing with. We're gonna play this one again three times. And here's Taps and Accents.
We've now taken um, our journey through all the warm-ups. Typically, in a two-hour rehearsal, we'll spend anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes warming up. We had four-hour rehearsals the week leading up to the White Bear Parade, and we would spend up to an hour warming up every day. Um, teaching technique and fundamentals is how we learn what we do. It's how we learn our craft. Just like if you're learning how to write, do math, every subject, every sport you do, you have to learn the technique, the fundamentals, in order to be able to effectively do what it is that you want to do. So when you put it all together, we have our parade features. And we're going to play our first one um, today, right now. It's called Number One. That's the title. Yep. It's an interesting name for everything. And so now what we do is we take all the techniques that we have and we just do it in a different variety of ways. So when they get a new parade tune, the only thing that's different, the technique is all the same, but the ink on the page is now different. So the order of the notes has now changed. Um, there's different styles of drumming. Um, we are a drum line, so it's more of a marching band style of thing. And so number one is a very rudimental type of drumming. So it's very precise. You'll see the two height playing, right? So you have your taps and your accents. You'll see hand-to-hand -hand playing, and you're gonna see um, some interesting things from the bass drum section with splits, the cymbal line with splits. You're gonna see some really challenging rhythms in the snare drums and the tenor drums. And you also get different melodies coming from the mouth. So here is our first parade tune. This is number one. Done. Uh, drum line, you can go at ease. All right, so now I'm going to take you on a tour of the different sections that we have here. We're going to start uh, right here in front. We're going to go in score order, which means um, if you look at a piece of music, they have the instruments in order. So, cymbals move. Thank you. All right, so we're going to start at the top. We're going to start with the snare drums. They're right here in front of me. They have one drum that's right in front of them. They have some of the most challenging rhythms that we have. A lot of our uh, veteran and um, experienced percussionists are on here. Um, fun fact, we have a lot of non-percussionists in the drum line. Uh, all non-percussionists, can you raise your hand for a second? Yes, I, that is a huge round of applause. Uh, these are students that are super committed and really love drumming and love music and opportunities, and so it's awesome that they have chosen to spend their time doing this. Um, so coming to the snare drum, they have one instrument, but if you notice, it's not just playing one drum in front of you. They're moving around, they're doing different things. We have accents and taps, we have playing on the rims, we have rim shots, we have a bunch of different things. So here is the snare drum feature. Go ahead, guys.
understand you guys know what it is. All right, next we're going with our tenor section. Symbols over there. Move. Thank you. Uh, so with the tenor drums, we also call them quint toms or quints. Uh, they have five surfaces that they have to play on. So they have to move side to side, kind of like windshield wipers. That's kind of the ideas that we use to help teach them their technique. Hey, stop talking, you two. <laughs> uh, so they have to move around. They have a lot of challenging rhythms um, that the snare drums have. But now the extra challenge that they have is they have to play those on five different surfaces. And they have to blend between the three of them to make it sound the same. So here is our tenor section. Symbols move. Thank you. All right. Next, we're gonna go over here. We're gonna go to our bass drum section. Uh, and so they have the one drum. It's up here. And so they have a challenge. They have to play the drum in a different way. Typically, when you're drumming, like on a snare drum or mallets, everything is on a horizontal surface. And now they have to play on a vertical surface. So that changes the technique that they have to use. Now they also have to play unisons, where they're all playing the same thing at the same time. And they also have to play splits. And typically, we have. Um, five bass drums, today we only have four, um, and they did a great job um, changing what they were supposed to play tonight to adapt to only having four players. So kudos to them. Um, but the big challenge of playing bass drum is having five different parts that five different people have to play at the same time to make it sound like one person is playing it. And so that's the unique challenge that they have. Here is the bass drum section. symbols you can move again we're going to feature the symbol section now um, <laughs> so the symbol section is the quote-unquote fun section this is the colorful playful splashy section these guys get to get away with doing a lots of extra visuals like I mentioned before the six of them are split into two groups of three and so they sometimes have to do things at different times and make it sound the same just like our bass drum section um, and there is a lot of techniques that they have to learn there's crashes, there's chokes, there's fizz ups, there's tings, there's zitions. There is a lot of extra things that they have to do and they have to usually wait a little bit longer and so it really requires them to count in their head and think really carefully about when and how they're gonna play their instrument. So here is the simple section. job everyone all right our last section is over here to my right your left uh, we have a mallet section and we have two different mallet instruments uh, we have a xylophone which is a wooden instrument and we have a clock which is a metallic instrument this is where the melody comes from um, and so you don't see this a lot with drum lines um, but we have had such a high interest over the years that we add added the mallet section so that we could have more people um, participate in drumline. So this is where you get your melodies from. Hopefully you're humming along at some point. Um, disclaimer, I did not know that they were going to play what they're playing. And that's all I have to say. Go ahead, Alex. So when you put it all together, 
Uh, every rehearsal starts like this. Set! And then they get at their attention position. Uh, when you put all this section together, you have a different sound. You can hear every instrument. They're all doing different things at different times. And it's what gives drumline its unique sound. Uh, so this parade tune is called number two. And uh, it's more of a drum set oriented thing for any of you uh, drummers out there trying to make it a little groovy versus very rudimental style drumming. So everyone is set and ready to go. Here is number two. So, um, every year we've come to the point now where we like to do some audience participation. Um, so anyone that's interested in drumline or what it is or like to learn more about these instruments, um, you are welcome to come up and join us. Raise your hand. Um, drumline, go ahead, go out and find someone. We're going to have you guys play eight on hand. Drumline, go, go find someone. Bring them up. Raise your hand if you'd like to come and learn about an instrument. Come on up. Anyone that's instrument. In, excuse me, interested in what is going on up here. We'd like to learn about some of our instruments. Um, when you come up, they're gonna teach you how to play eight on a hand, which is the very first warm up um, that we did. Just eight notes in a row, and they just go back and forth between the two. Um, so we're gonna teach them how to play this, and then um, I'll talk in just a second here after they teach everyone kind of what they're doing. And now we're going to play eight on a hand, and let's just see what happens. All right? One time through eight on a hand, please. when it was supposed to end. I gave a little cut up there so you guys can know. Hey guys, not that bad. Hey, it sounded pretty good, right? Yeah. Kind of goes against everything I was hoping to prove with my point that drumming is really hard. <laughs> um, but hey, nice job, everyone. So we're going to try it again. We're going to play it three more times. It's going to get faster every time we do it, right? Um, and we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, do your best, guys. Here we go. Three more times on eights. tempo ready all right not bad not bad right all right let's let's prove my point now let's play it really fast <laughs> 